Hello, my name is Dr. Elena Gorfinkel, and I'm a senior lecturer in film studies at King's College London. Welcome to this IU cinema screening of Marta Mesa Arosha's Adoption, which I'm really delighted to be introducing virtually to you. Although discussions of output frequently privilege filmmakers whose careers have been bounteous, such assignations as we may be aware become really thorny in the case of many women filmmakers who faced many barriers uh, in making films. In histories of women's films in the 1970s, one woman in particular stood out in her seriousness and prolificness, and that is Hungarian filmmaker Marta Mészáros, who was a contemporary of filmmakers like the French Agnes Varda, the Italian Lina Wertmüller, the Czech Vera Chitilova, and the Soviet filmmaker Larisa Shepitko. Uh, Mészáros's titanic contribution to Hungarian cinema spanned over 60 films, including 37 documentaries and newsreels, as well as over 25 feature films, in addition to shorts, television projects, and screenwriting credits. Over the course of a 50-year career that spanned the course of state socialism, the fall of the wall, and the aftermaths of Hungary's shift to a market-driven society and incorporation into the European Union, her films are marked by an attunement to the ordinary lives of women caught in the crosshairs of larger historical changes, revolutions, and cataclysms. Her cinema was inflected by her own life's tragedies, which Mesaros molded into on-screen existence. Mesaros was born in 1931 in Budapest, and as a child emigrated to Soviet Kyrgyzstan when her parents relocated there in 1936. May Shadows' father was an avant-garde sculptor, and he was killed in the Stalinist purges around 1938, and her mother, as well, died shortly thereafter. She was rendered an orphan and eventually adopted by a communist functionary um, from Hungary living in, the Soviet, in, in Soviet Russia. She returned to Hungary from Soviet Russia in 1946. As a young adult, she tried to attend film school in Hungary, where she was rejected for being a woman. So she chose to propose study in Moscow at BGIK, the famed film school where Sergei Gerasimov and Alexander Dovzhenko taught. She came back to Hungary with a Muscovite education and began her career in documentary shorts and educational films where she traveled across the country and to also to in Romania making films. Mesaros's experience of being an orphan on the eve of war and in the midst of war infused much of her cinema as we shall see in the film we're watching today, Adoption. Her characters throughout her films and in this one in particular are often lonely, resolute women molded by abandonment, orphanhood, by the forces of war, revolution, and shifts in state power. Adoption was a critical turning point in May Sadosh's career and her broader recognition as a filmmaker beyond Central and Eastern Europe. It was May Sadosh's fifth fiction feature, in fact, and she had made several strong films prior to this, including her first film, the 1968 film, The Girl, which dealt with a young adult woman uh, living in the city who seeks out her mother who abandoned her in a small village as well as the youth culture rock film that is rather experimental called Don't Cry Pretty Girls, which is akin to a Hungarian version of A Hard Day's Night uh, and features a lot of uh, then uh, popular uh, rock bands from Hungary. Adoption was the first Hungarian film entered into the main film competition at the Berlin Halle, and May Saros was the first Hungarian and the first woman filmmaker from any country to win the Golden Bear for the film in 1975. The impact of the work led to the international circulation of her films, as well as collaborations uh, beyond Hungary, as actors such as Anna Karina, Marina Vladi, and Delphine Seyrig clamored to work with her. May Sadosh herself commented on the impact that the Berlin Award had on her career, quote, with the Golden Bear, I was able to enter into real filmmaking I'd become a film director, not a woman who makes films. Fassbinder accepted me and many others accepted me, Godard and the others. 
I entered the club not as a woman, but as a filmmaker. Very interesting comments for uh, kind of for a woman making films in a primarily male dominated industry and wanting to be accepted in terms of her cinematic production on her own terms. Mesa Rush's adoption, which you are seeing this evening, is a stunning work of maternal melodrama. Ironically, uh, I'm saying this ironically for a film that's about orphans, about the absence of mothers and the difficult path faced to motherhood for some, some women. It's also a film which is strikingly terse and reserved in how it portrays emotion. So that sense of maternal melodrama is double-edged in how I think you'll experience the film. More than that, this is also a film of faces, faces captured in the flux of their feeling and the mobility of su subtle shifts of mood, reflection and evaluation by her tenderly wrought characters. Drawing on the extraordinary performances of Katalin Berek, who plays Kata, and Gyongi Vervig, who plays Anna in the main roles. The story concerns Kata, a 43-year-old widowed factory worker who seeks to have a child with her married lover. She crosses paths at the same time with a teenaged orphan girl who has been left to the care of the state institution. The film unfolds the unique intergenerational relationship that forms between them, somewhere on the border of kinship, friendship, affection, uh, a relationship that's neither entirely parental or pedagogical or even erotic, but harboring some element of each and the possibility of something else besides. Shot on location and using many non-professional actors, particularly the, the girls in the orphanage uh, in particular, and set in rural Hungary, it's shot in black and white by the cinematographer Lajos Koltai. And it has a decidedly realist tone, tracing subjects that were at the time considered verboten to discuss in Hungarian society. At the time, the subject of orphans and abandoned children was something that official cultural venues were loath to emphasize in this Soviet aligned state, which argued that women's problems had been resolved by state socialism and the equality it offered on the front of um, equal, equal labor. But reproductive labor and the double bind that produced, that is mothering, cleaning, all those unremunerated tasks that are that reserved for women um, was the crux of this double bind, unevenly applied. Adoption thus attends to the daily gestures and routines of women's laboring life, lives, as well as the disappointments of a life that doesn't go as to plan from the perspective of these two wayward women at the film center of very different ages. Rarely has the cinema given us such a unique representation of women's relationships without the usual bromides or conventions, presenting us with two women who have been worn out and discarded in different ways, but who nevertheless retain their independent spirit and determined idiosyncrasies. Kata, played brilliantly by Katalin Berek, has a style of acting that is stunning in its subtlety of expression and inward directed emotion, as you'll see. This oddly did not sit well with Hungarian audiences at the time who thought her performance was unsympathetic or just bad acting. But her unsentimental portrayal of this overlooked ordinary woman who seeks some path towards fulfillment and equanimity through motherhood was very much in line with May Sadosh's interest in non-demonstrative non-theatricalized acting and aesthetics. Mesarosh would frequently note that with the quote, obstinacy of a mule, she doggedly returned to the subject of women who assert their own autonomy and expressivity. In one interview, she articulates some of her rationale. She says, in my films, I try to portray interesting women, not geniuses, but interesting women. There was a time when I was going to make a film on Marie Curie, but I've never been able to do this because Marie Curie was a genius. I couldn't portray a woman with Marie Curie's brain because it would be impossible to understand her from within. So rather than present, presenting geniuses, she states elsewhere that, quote, in my films, as a matter of fact, I tell banal commonplace stories and in them, the leads are invariably women. I portray things from a woman's angle male directors are never questioned to tell why it is that in their films, they concern themselves with men. If Andrei Vazda chooses to make a works manager the center of his film's story, why, that's only natural. That is his problem, that's what interests him. 
Yet it is always asked of me why I choose women for my films. Adoption's realism is also quite striking, not just for its centering of women's subjectivity, but also in how it draws on May Sadosh's history and training as a documentarian early in her career. As we see life as it's lived in this small Hungarian town with a muted observational perspective of factory work, provincial locations like the beer hall and institutional spaces like the orphanage. There's an unsentimental reticence that runs through May Sadosh's films and this one in particular, which observed the environment of these stanch Hungarian locales worn by the winds of historical turmoil. Hungary, a small Central European nation, isolated by geography and a distinct language, had experienced over the course of a century three failed revolutions, the allegiance with fascism and the subsequent Soviet occupation, dictatorship and suppression, and the internecine toll of the Second World War and Stalinist purges. We feel that weight of history obliquely in contrast to some of the later films that May Sadosh would make about her own autobi autobiography in her Diary for My Children trilogy. But here we see it in the details of the locale, uh, the particularities of work uh, as it's performed and the ways that the state itself cannot fully provide the care it promises to at the level of individuals everyday lives. The cinematography by Lajos Koltai is also extraordinarily affecting, precisely as it moves fluidly, a tracking camera that puts us directly into the relational flow between people in the push and pull of their negotiated togetherness. We see this in the scenes where Kata speaks with her married lover, Joska, played by Laszlo Sabo, who himself is a great actor who worked quite a lot with French New Wave directors and lived in Paris. In this scene with um, where they're speaking early in the film, you see the camera oscillate between them in this conversation, rather than cutting um, kind of cutting and kind of reverse shot, shot reverse shot in a dialogue scene, as one would expect. This oscillation of the camera as it tracks around them back and forth creates a feeling of a constant rebalancing and of the weight and gravity of their relationship, its uneven terms and conditions. The film's use of fluid close-ups also creates an incredible feeling of intimacy and veracity in this proximity to these characters, um, who themselves are sort of taciturn, reticent. The faces of Mesarosh's film are threaded together by a fluidly stirring camera movement, one that frequently conjoins and traces the energies and emotional currents of bodies that are present to each other in the microdramas of their entanglements. One of the fundamental paradoxes then of Mesarosh's cinema is its tightly wrought balance of what I'm describing as this reticence on the one hand and emotional plenitude on the other. Through the alchemy of its close-ups, timorous faces and mesmeric camera movement, Mesarosh produces a profound effective charge. The film's ethical and relational questions, what should a mother be? A question that Mesarosh herself asks in an interview pushes at the bounds of where exactly motherhood can begin, end, or emerge as a possibility in alternative forms of care, kinship, and nurturance. One could align Kata and Anna and their disaffected stance, their status as outsiders, with Mesarosh's global contemporaries, filmmakers who, in their own films, explore the question of feminine ungovernability. People like Agnes Varda, who in Vagabond, treats a woman who drops out from society to wander uh, and drift. Chantal Ackerman, who is John Dealman, also um, while, uh, while trying to uh, kind of live an ordered life, also rebels as a kind of housewife and widow. Kira Muratova, whose, whose heroines often are eccentric and unusual. Barbara Loden, whose film Wanda, also presents us with a drifter, a wanderer, as well as many other women filmmakers who explore these, uh, character, these women characters who are outsiders. Uh, Mesarosh has stated that, quote, the search for mother and fa father were determining experiences in my life. The concept of the child left on its own or abandoned is something that has excited me in almost all of my films. In this film, adoption, orphanhood, for Mesarosh is also a way of exploring women 
who find their own ways to breathe to the beat of their own peculiarity, their own um, dissidence and independence. A final statement from May Sarosh is something I'll leave you with, who suggests uh, something considering how her cinema is a women's cinema. Sure, I'm being sensitive in a different way from men. My shots work out differently too, and it's a different world that emanates from my films. With that thought in mind, I hope you enjoy watching this beautiful film. Thank you. <laughs>